Hello everyone, I hope you are having an amazing day. Today I'd like to talk to you about Nightingale, as they just had a stress test to their servers, which I took part of, so I'd like to provide some thoughts about the game in its current state. For those that might not know, Nightingale is an open world PvE survival crafting game that can be played solo or in cooperation with other players. You can build structures, craft items and fight enemies as you explore a variety of realms. The game has been announced in 2021 and it's now nearing its final cycle of development so they are starting to open the game up to testers such as yours truly to squash bugs, adapt server loads and more. So let's talk a bit about the game. You start on the character creation screen, which at the moment has quite a few options available already. The style of the game tries to mix a Victorian era visual with some fantastical elements, and it's one of the most unique looking games. It's not a style that is often used. There are some options on the character creation that are missing, which is normal right now, a lot of the game isn't finalized, but I did feel like the game gave you some options like the ancestry without much of a context on how they'll affect the game. Especially the lineage and inheritance options, which seems to be just visual in nature, without any explanation on how they mechanically impact the game. I do want to preface that they did explain this was a test to the servers and not necessarily as a beta to introduce how the game works, so keep that in mind. After we are done with the character we can select the difficulty, which is twofold. You can select the amount of gear you start with and you can select how dangerous the realm you start in is, so it gives you a lot of leeway on how you want to start out. Since this was my first time I decided on a medium realm power, which came back to bite me in the ass. Since I had only a couple of hours to do the test I couldn't really get strong enough to beat the first realm. Once you start you get an amazing cutscene that honestly got me super hyped for the game that will be in the future. Keep in mind a lot of what I saw on this cutscene I couldn't find in game because it's highly dependent on the realm you start with, but it's no doubt a great look to what you'll see in the future. It mostly looks pre-rendered stuff so I don't expect necessarily for the game to look like that, more on that later. As you start the game you see there is a card system that explains the realm or biome if you will that you are currently in. I think this will play an even more important role when you start to travel to multiple realms and want to see how your progress tracks. You are introduced to Puck that is kind of your guide to the early stages of the game, providing quests so that you can learn the mechanics and so on. This is when I first realized the game right now is still very raw. A lot of the UI feels very outdated and confusing to look at. Many of the actions that occur on the game, such as resource collection or building, will only be shown on the log on the corner of your screen, which constantly distracts you from the main action at the center of the screen to check the particulars of what resource you are getting, for example. They set up the stress test so that you'd start with a lot of resources and provide you with a way to start building your first estate right away. I took a while to understand there is a keybind that shows me all the commands on the game, so I got a late start on that. Again, this is a server test, I'm not expecting a tutorial, but I do feel like they need to work on that a little to make it more accessible. Visually the game looks gorgeous and doesn't run too badly either, I've got an Nvidia 3080 and a 5600X, so I didn't have much trouble running it. However, once I set up the graphics to the max, the game was pretty much unplayable, which is to be expected at this stage. I don't think they have optimized the game for different hardware yet and the purpose right now should be to test the mechanics anyway. Regardless, I think on any level of graphics you should have a good representation of the world. I don't know if there were other realms I could have explored, sadly I didn't have much time to do it, but this one looked really interesting already, with a variety of structures to explore and a lot of wolves. Oh my god, the wolves. It came to a point where they were invading the house like my landlord when I don't pay rent. I liked the combat and the feeling of the weapons that I was able to try out, but I did feel like the system of selecting items for both hands needs a bit of work. Maybe it was my keybinds that weren't ideal, but it felt really clunky to select what was on my other hand and then having to click another key to activate it rather than just use the mouse keys. I'm not sure how much this could be improved, maybe it's just a little bit of friction from my end, on the count of not playing a lot of games that use this kind of setup of main hand and off hand for handling the items. Going back to the earlier stages of when I was building the house, I think it's a fine system. I don't think it's detailed enough to the point people will see crazy constructions like Valheim or similar, but I feel it gives you some strong basics that more talented people will definitely take advantage of. 
I had a lot of trouble differentiating between crafting stations that you can place, each one with different purposes to crafting items, and it seems they missed the chance of making them look more unique and distinguishable. It will be very easy to confuse one with the others when they don't have a whole lot of color or shape differences. And since the game is so good looking with its Victorian themes, I think they can go harder on that direction. I didn't have the chance to play around with the card system a lot, but it seems that it will play a vital role in how you face the challenges of each realm. Since the cards can give you bonuses, but also give disadvantages, you'll want to build it out in a way that allows you to face the bosses in the game much more easily. And again, I was assaulted by wolves here constantly for some reason. Basically, my first hour of the game was just exploring the map a little, taking the sights and check some structures out. There are some places of power where you can defeat enemies to gain bonuses. I got really excited by the structures I saw, I just wish I was a bit stronger to have faced the enemies and complete the challenge. It's very possible that a lot of the game could have been a lot easier with some friends, but I had no way to test that out, since it was a very narrow window for the test to happen. There will also be opportunities to recruit some NPCs, to work with you after you complete their requests, which is interesting, I like that idea and I wish I had found it sooner. As I closed in on the 2 hour mark, I had to end my test after failing to explore one of the structures that was filled with enemies. It was easy at first and then got progressively harder the further down I went. Luckily there is a fast travel to your home base so you won't have to waste a lot of time tracking back if you don't want to. So right now I feel the game is at a solid place. It needs a lot of polish on its UI and combat mechanics though. It's one of the main game loops, so they need to nail this down to make it fun to play. I had a lot of fun already, but I can see how some players would probably quit the game after some time due to more frustrating aspects of the UI or unclear progression through the game. Honestly, I feel like I would have needed some solid 8 to 10 hours to really provide an in-depth retelling of my experience, but I can see the bones of a good game here. And I wanted to just give you my initial thoughts on my experience, as I'll likely give it another try in the future. The game releases in early access this month, so it won't be long until we see more of the game. It has a long road ahead to be polished up for release, but it's definitely really exciting to see and I can't wait to show you guys more. Thank you all so much for watching the video, if you liked it make sure to leave a comment and subscribe. As always, have a lovely day and bye bye.